Good people trickling in here. Recorded. Thank you. Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. So, shall we start? Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so, again, we start with a short breathing meditation, watching your breath mindfully for a few moments. You know, we can try to generate good intention, motivations by reflecting, contemplating. As long as we have the delusions, those destructive emotions. We will always encounter and find some problem, unhappiness, suffering. No matter what our external situations are. No matter what you where we are, no matter with whom we are. No matter in what ever situation we are, we will always find reason to be unhappy. Reason to be dissatisfied. get into trouble, problems. There's no end to that. Therefore, if you want to find more Lasting peace, joy, happiness. We have to reduce those affective emotions. 
eventually overcome them completely. And when we are able to do that, then we can be anywhere with anyone in every situation. We can still find inner peace, joy, satisfaction, happiness. And in order to minimize and destroy those afflictive emotions, those destructive emotions, one must cultivate the antidote. The two bow to the mind. Therefore, I'm going to try as much as I can to cultivate and maintain and increase, improve those body, two bodies of the mind. So I can find my own inner peace, joy, happiness, as well as to be source of great help, benefit to each and every sense and beings. Directly, indirectly, those who come in our life. And having cultivated two boats in the mind and engaged in the boats of the path, may I be able to achieve fully awakened state. I'm going to try all my best to achieve that fully enlightened state. So I can be greatest help and benefit to each and every sentient beings. And in order to achieve that fully enlightened state, one must engage into the path through practices. For that we need to engage in a practice to practice we need to be reminded, inspired. And for that very reason that we have gathered here to listen, to engage in discussion, reflection, and contemplation. May I always be helpful and beneficial to others in this life, in all future life. While we're on the path, and of course, as after we have achieved the enlightenment. May I never hurt and harm and be cause of 
suffering and pain to others in all our life, this life, in all future life on the path. Okay. Oh, anyone feel free to unmute themselves. Guru teaches Bhagavan Tathagata Ahat perfectly complete Buddhas, perfect in knowledge and good conduct, Sugata and all of the world, certain guides of beings to be subdued, teacher of God and human. To you, the Buddha Bhagavan, glorious Kanguru Shakyamuni, I process make perfect and go for the good. Guru teacher Bhagavan Tathagata Ahat perfectly complete Buddha, perfect in knowledge and good conduct, Sugata and all of the world, supreme guides of human beings to be subdued, teacher of God and human. To you, the Buddha Bhagavan, glorious conqueror Shakyamuni, I prostrate, make offering, go for everything. Guru, teacher, Bhagavan, Tathagata, Aha, perfectly complete. Buddha, perfect in knowledge, good conduct, Sugata, and all of the world, supreme God of human beings to be subdued, teacher of God and humans. To you, the Buddha Bhagavan, glorious conqueror Shakyamuni, I prostrate, make offering, go for everything. Sashipeti <laughs> I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my merits of listening to the Dharma, may I become a Buddha to benefit transmigrated beings. So I can um, <clears throat> welcome everyone and good morning, everyone. Um, so again, nice to see all of you. Um, it's a little bit chilly here. The call here, I guess it's same there in Colorado. Yeah. Uh, so yesterday we kind of discussed about how to integrate uh, the Dharma into our everyday life, um, in our practice and our activities in our everyday life. And especially yesterday we discussed about um, from the law John, uh, those um, integrating the five forces or five powers. Um, and in addition to that, I think we talked about the first two one yesterday, the motivations, the force of motivations, um, the power of force of motivation and the power of force of familiarity. 
and basically, you know, trying to throughout the day, you know, whatever we are doing, trying to integrate the two bodhicitta practice as much as possible from morning to the evening, you know, whenever we get any kind of um, opportunity and making the, the practice of two bodhicitta as the, the, the principal practice, the primary practice of during the uh, meditative session, during the meditation sessions or off meditation sessions in whatever um, activities that we engage into. So we talk a little bit about that. And then, you know, thirdly, um, the power, the force of white, uh, white seat or virtues, you know. So, you know, that is, again, the main practice in our life being the true bodhicitta mind. And then, you know, um, whatever other practice we do, whatever other virtues we engage into through our body, speech, and the mind, make sure that all of them support that main practice, the main practice of the true bodhicitta. You know, so using all other virtues as a supporting the, the, the principle, the prime main practice, the heart practice, that is the bodhicitta, the two bodhicitta mind. And so, you know, throughout the day, you know, um, we we'll try to, even we might not have a formal meditations, but whenever we get any opportunity, whatever we are doing, while you are cooking, while you are walking, you know, while you are driving, you know, or whatever you are doing, you know, trying to think, reflect, contemplate a little bit on loving kindness, compassion, bodhicitta mind, you know, or, you know, taking refuge to the Buddha Dhamma Sanghas from your heart, you know, mm. having a good thought, positive thoughts, you know, towards others, rejoicing in others' goodness, virtues, rejoicing in our own goodness, virtues. So we engage in those, that kind of mentally in those different virtues and practice, you know. And then verbally, you know, Whenever we get opportunity, trying to recite prayers, mantras, using your speech to recite some, you know, whether it's reciting a sutras, reciting a different prayers, practices, or mantras, you know. Physically, you know, again, whenever we get opportunity, trying to use our physical um, to create virtues physically, you know, by making offerings, the Buddha Dharma Sanghas, you know, holy objects, you know, by paying homage, you know, prostrating, making prostrations, circumambulating, you know, towards holy objects. and physically being kind, compassion, caring, showing affections physically to others, you know, whenever we get any kind of opportunity. So through that, you know, basically engaging into whatever virtues through body, speech, and mind, whenever we get any throughout the day opportunity, we try to engage in them. And then, you know, dedicate all these virtues to support our main practice of the two bodhicitta mind, you know. With the intention, when we engage in those different virtues practice, we engage, we try to engage in those practice with the motivations through those practice to support that main practice. I'm engaged in this practice so that this can be supporting 
factors, conducive factors to support my main practice of Chubojita mind. And then when we, when we do, when we um, finish those practice, you know, then also, you know, dedicating those practice to be, to be um, you know, supportive for our main practice, the Chubojita mind. And so trying to, again, you know, sometimes taking any opportunity to create virtues through any of three doors, any of three doors, you know, even while you are walking in your home, when you see holy object, even with just kind of, you know, folding your hand, bowing down, showing respect, you know, while you are doing something, just reciting the mantras or any other prayers, you know. And so utilize all of that, you know. While you are driving, you can listen to the teachings. You can listen to the teachings or listen to the prayers, practice, you know, or mantras, you know, and while you are listening, you also try to follow as much as possible. You know. So again, utilizing any kind of um, opportunity that we have to utilize that for virtues, you know. So, mm. and you know, while you are doing other things, you know, cooking, whatever you do throughout that, you know, sometimes we can just play, you know, teachings, listen to the prayers, mantras, again, those, you know, just by listening. You have a good imprint, you know. An imprint can be very powerful, not only from the future, not only for the futures, not talking about the future lives, you know, of course there is no doubt about that. Even in this life, you know, listening can have a strong imprint in your mind, you know. Even though you might not feel you are getting any from that by hearing that at that point. You know, I have a friend, you know, um, who was studying Buddhism, not, not as a path, you know, just to, because he has stroke and he's, he had to kind of, um, You know, his brain got damaged, he, he lost memory and everything. So he was trying to train his brain back. And the, the doctor told him that he had to do many different things. And one of them was to study something he had never studied before. So he had never studied Eastern philosophy or philosophy. And so he was studying Eastern philosophy and part of that Buddhism, you know. So he was studying by himself, reading and all of that, you know, and then coming to the teaching sometimes, you know, uh, but mostly studying himself. And his motivation is just to regain his brain so then he can go back to what he used to do, you know. So he have no interest of pursuing as a spiritual path, you know. He was not studying it as a way of spiritual path or to pursue that. But he had been reading and studying for many, many years just for his brain, you know. And it's interesting, he was saying, you know, one day his dog died, you know. And the immediate kind of reaction he had was wishing the dog to have a better future life. He was shocked. That was his kind of immediate kind of thinking that he had thought came in his mind, you know, and he was shocked to notice that, you know. 
And so that is imprint because he has been reading, studying that for a long time. Even though he wasn't pursuing that as a path, even though he wasn't totally believing everything that he's reading, but somehow the imprint of that having study and learn and for that imprint was so even him without him know, knowing and noticing that without him noticing and that you know so imprint and that that was his first kind of reactions you know and he said then he when he sees spiders in his home again thoughts come what what must be this what was the past life of this one, you know, again, like those kind of things just pop up in his mind, you know, out of nowhere, you know, out of nowhere, you know, not expected kind of for, for him, you know, and, um, and, and uh, eventually, actually, he, uh, he decided that he want to take it as a path and as a spiritual path. And, you know, he, he dedicated, you know, he, he, he decided to take refuge and he decided to kind of see this as a path, not just as study. And now he's really kind of totally kind of dedicated to that. But what I'm, the, the, the story I'm trying to share is the imprint, how much that imprint can have the influence. You know, what you hear, you know, whether it's good or bad, you know, that can have a strong influence in our mind, you know. Um, and it's the same like news, you know, different news. Even you don't believe those news, you keep on hearing them, keep on reading them slowly, slowly. That might become a kind of you not know, strong, had a strong influence in your belief, you know. And so, so definitely, you know, having something that is positive imprint, we want to have as many positive imprint as possible, as possible. As many positive imprint as much as possible. And so therefore, you know, kind of, um, whenever we get opportunities, just kind of um, listening, readings, reflecting, contemplating, you know. Um, and that is, it must be imprint, you know. Some people, you know, they hear the teaching for the first time and they feel like they have heard that before. They feel, feel very home, you know. And some topics, very, very difficult topic for most people, but some people they hear first time and it, they find so easy and they can connect it so easily. Where, where most of people find very, they struggle to connect with that particular subject or that particular teachings, you know? And again, I believe it is the imprint from the past, you know, when you have imprint and, you are familiar with that, and because of that imprint and familiarity, then you are able to connect um, and feel close and connect easily, you know. And so, imprint. So anyway, so that is that was. Uh, and then the power of the fourth one, the power of you know. Um, Letting go, you know. I think uh, Lama Sabarum Boche was the, the power of blaming the ego. Mm. So again, throughout the day, you know, as we mentioned yesterday, being as mindful as possible, being as introspective as possible throughout the day, you know, being mindful of our speech, body and mind, time to time, using your introspection mind, you know, 
what am I thinking now, you know, in my mind, what's going on? How am I using my speech? Am I using for a good or bad? You know, in terms of my physical uh, gesture, posture, how, how am I acting, you know? So time to time, using the introspection and being mindful all the time. especially with our mind, mind and speech, you know. Those are, as one of the Katamba, uh, in the Katamba's teachings, um, one of the advice is, you know, when you are in the midst of others, watch your, watch your speech. When you are by yourself, watch your mind. You know, and again, I think those are really, really great advice. You know, when you are by yourself, you know, you don't have to be so watchful of your speech. You are not going to hurt anyone. You know, you might be, you might not be hurting anyone. But when you are together with others, we have to be very mindful of speech. Sometimes we are not aware not being aware and mindful, we might say something that we wish we didn't say that. You know, we wish, we wish that we can take it back. But of course, we cannot take it back. And whatever hurt, harm that might have done is done. The damage is done. And so, if you are more mindful, then we will be, you know, whether we should say, not say, you know, and to be able to use the right words, you know, so that we don't use the wrong words. Even sometimes we don't have the intentions, sometimes not being mindful, we might not use the right, the best words, you know, choice of the words. And that can have an impact on others who's listening. So therefore, uh, and then of course, um, so, so what I was saying was being very mindful of our three doors throughout the day. And whenever we notice, you know, whenever through, by through mindfulness, whenever any kind of selfish attitude arises, Whenever any selfish attitude arises, whenever any ignorance arises, being, you know, recognizing that, oh, selfish attitudes arising, or oh, manifesting, the ignorance manifesting, being aware of them, recognizing and being aware of them. And then, you know, because of such selfish attitude, because of such ignorance from the beginning of the lifetime, that is why I've suffered so much. That is why I get into problem all the time. That's why I'm having all this different challenges, difficulties, problems, suffering, all due to because of that selfish attitude and that ignorance, self-grasping ignorance. You know, and so with that understanding, due to that recognition, awareness and understanding, then, you know, we try all our in whatever capacity, in whatever practice method we have to kind of, you know, minimize and reduce and overcome and destroy that's without any delay, the selfish attitude and the self grasping ignorance. You know, not giving them the space to remain for a long time. 
try to push them, try to, you know, by applying the antidote, whatever antidote, by applying the antidote, we try to kick them out. You know, we're trying to expel from our mind, from our heart. Hmm. Not giving them the space. If we, give, if we give them the space, it will only harm oneself and others. The only thing that it does is harm oneself and others. It only brings damage. It only does damage to oneself and others if we give the space. And so that then you know, we we'll try to reduce that, you know. If we are not aware, normally we give fuel to the, that, you know, selfish attitude and the ignorance. It becomes more stronger, more intense. And then with that strong and, you know, intense uh, feeling of that, selfish attitude and that, you know, then it also leaves a lot of imprint within our mind stream. And as well as due to that, then we engage into one of the actions through any of the doors that is more harmful, hurtful, distractive to others and oneself. So again, um, Again, through that kind of mindfulness introspections, you know, throughout the day, we we'll try to be as mindful as possible. And if we, when any of the afflictive emotion arises, you know, sometimes sense of frustration arises, sometimes sense of impatience arises, sometimes strong desire arises. Sometimes greediness, miserliness arises. Sometimes jealousy and pride arises, you know. Sometimes anger, you know, harsh feelings, ill will feelings arises, you know. Those, so again, you know, those different negative emotions arises. And when those, the different negative emotion arises again. Being aware of them, recognizing them. Oh, you know, anger has arises now. Oh, impatience in manifesting. You know. Oh, now, you know, frustration is being being active. So through that, being aware and recognizing what is happening in our mind in that moment. And once you are aware and um, recognizing what is happening, you know, then you know all of those afflictive emotions which are very harmful and very destructive to ourselves in short term, long term worldly, spiritually, as long as, as, as well as those are the source of, you know, harm to others as well. And so all of these harmful, you know, distracted emotions, again, recognizing they all arises, they all manifests from the root of from the root of the ignorance they all arises from that being rooted in the ignorance and selfish attitude because of that selfish attitude and that ignorance it give rise to all these other afflictive emotions which are very distracting Again, with that understanding, with that understanding, then again, coming to understand the need to, the need to apply antidote, the need to apply antidotes 
to the very root of those reflective emotions, which is the, the selfish attitude and ignorance. And we did that understanding, you know, making strong determination, strong determinations to apply the antidote to reduce, minimize, and to destroy and cut the very root of all those affective emotions. Hmm. So, as we have mentioned before, the main practice, the primary practice had to be to bolster the mind. And the main obstacles to develop to bolster the mind is the ignorance and selfish attitude. The selfish attitude is the main obstacles, interference to cultivate the bodhicitta, um, relative bodhicitta mind. The ignorance is the main obstacles, interference to develop the ultimate bodhicitta mind. And so therefore, again, you know, mm, while we are trying to cultivate those two bodhicitta mind to practice, and part of that practice is to reduce and overcome the main obstacles to develop those two. And that is, you know, in order to destroy them, we have to, we have to recognize that how, how they, they are the main obstacles and how they are harmful to ourselves and to others. And why, that is why we need to, you know, apply the antidote to reduce and overcome them and destroy and eliminate them. So again, using that throughout the day, whenever, whenever, you know. Um, and it is important for part of practice throughout the day, you know, as we try to be more mindful and watchful and introspective with our minds, with our thoughts, feelings, you know, whatever it arises. I think it is a, you know, good training is a good training instead of saying, you know, I'm angry now, I'm frustrated. Instead of thinking that way, it would be more helpful to think anger is arising now. Frustration is manifesting now. There's a two different, when you say I'm angry, it feel like, you know, you are part of that anger, you know. When you say anger is manifesting or the man anger is arising, you are separate from that anger, you know. And to be able to differentiate the persons from their emotions is important. By understanding those emotions as anger or jealousy or pride or uh, attachments, you know, they are not in the nature of ourselves. They, we are, they are not in our nature. They are just temporary. And therefore, they can be overcome, they can be um, purified, cleansed, you know. There is a different, you know, um, when I feel I'm angry and when you feel like you are, you yourself is part of that anger or anger is part of your nature, then, you know, um, it is, it become much more intense and overwhelming. But when you see as something, you know, it's just anger arising among so many different emotions we have, different feeling we have, different mind we have, the anger is just one of them and is it's being active now due to certain causes and conditions. So then it feel like, you know, it is something much more smaller, you know, and something that you can take care of, something you can deal with, you know, something you can overcome it. And so, hmm.
So just learning to look separate, you know, yourself or your mind with being watchful, mindful, and the anger arising there, somewhere there. You know, whatever negative emotion that is arising or manifesting at that time. Mm. So it's like, you know, instead of being in the middle of fire, you see the fire there from distant. Do you get this? There is a difference. You see the there, fire being there, instead of seeing that yourself in the midst of the fire itself. And that is how, uh, you know, uh, there's a different feeling, a different reaction, to how you see it, you know. So instead of seeing I'm in the midst of, fire of anger, you just see, oh, there is an anger arising. Hmm. And then, um, and also, yeah, throughout the day, you know, any challenges, difficulties, adversities, circumstances, situations, experience that arises, you know. Sometimes, you know, basically we might not feel so well throughout the day, sometimes, you know, sometimes things doesn't go the way we expect it, you know. Sometimes we meet things, situation that we didn't expect it, you know. So throughout the day, you know, different things happen, different experiences, different things, you know, it doesn't go all the time the way we want things to go, you know, so. Time to time, we have small to big challenges. You know, sometimes it's very tiny, small problems, not the big problems. Sometimes the problems are much bigger. Sometimes the challenges are nothing really um, significant. Sometimes some of the challenges are much more bigger and significant. You know, so whatever we face, that again, being aware, recognizing that. Oh, you know, here again, it is another challenge. Here, here, another um, situation, another problem arising. Again, you know, the root cause of this problem, the root cause of this challenge and difficulty, the primary and the main primary root cause of this is again our own selfish attitude and self-centeredness and the ignorance, the selfish attitude and the ignorance. Again, to be able to relate that with that too, you know, always. And by doing that, again, you are practicing the two the mind. Relate that always. Even though there might be some temporary, you know, external cause and conditions that created this challenge, these problems, you know, this difficulty, adversities, even though there might be some contributions, even though, even though there might be some external contributions towards that, but the primary cause, the primary cause and the root of that is our own selfish attitude and the ignorance and the imprint led by that, that is manifesting now, you know. Due to that selfish attitude and ignorance, you know, we, we leave imprint, the potential. And then when certain cause and condition come, that potential produce such a result. 
So such potential, such potential is being produced because such potential has been left behind by the selfish attitude and ignorance. So if there is no internal potentials, karmic potentials, internal potentials, even you encounter those external conditions, you will not experience that challenge, that difficulty, that sufferings. But it's coming together of two things. It's coming together of two things. One, the potentials there to, to, to produce such experience, such result, and then coming together immediately other conditions, external cause and conditions. But if we do not have that internal conditions, then even with the external condition coming together, one will not experience that. And that internal conditions, the potential is created and left by the selfish attitude and ignorance. So again, connecting all of our experience, unpleasant experiences that we encounter throughout the day, always connecting back to that primary cause, connecting the primary cause of that primary is back to that again, um, the, the selfish attitude and self-centeredness. And thereby, you know, creating a strong, you know, distant, creating a strong distant from that selfish attitude and self-centeredness. At the moment, you know, we have become too, too friendly with them, you know. They are part of ourselves. They have become part of ourselves. It's like we cannot be without them. You know, they have become such a such a huge family, part of like family, you know. Become like almost like yourself. And now you through that kind of meditation and practice, we are being more and more aware. Oh, these are not my friend. They are an enemy disguised as a friend. Being more and more aware of that through this meditation and practice with each of those. Even though they present as being a helpful, beneficial sometime. As a friend, as a caring. But in reality, what they do is hurt and harm us. It only hurt and harm us. So therefore, it's like an enemy being around you in the disguise as a friend or and not being able to recognize that. Not being able to recognize that. And therefore, not being able to recognize that. So therefore, they have been able to kind of, you know, um, control and, you know, deceive us very easily. Very easily deceive and control us. And so with this kind of meditations, everything that, every un unpleasant experience having, when you are able to practice by seeing and connecting that the root cause of that is our own selfish attitude and ignorance, as we do more and more and more that, then we are able to expose them and being more and more aware. They are not really friend, but they are really enemy. They are not really helping us. They are really harming us. And the more we are aware, then we will not embrace them knowingly and happily in the futures we will have more kind of trying to keep distant. At the moment, we don't, we, we seem to embrace very easily them, the selfish attitude and ignorance, you know, instead of pushing them away, we seem to embrace them very easily. Welcome them very easily. And so, so that is, that is the, the practice and meditations, you know, so again, 
if we start doing that with one thing and then slowly, slowly get, you get used to that and then you can be able to see anything happens, you know. Also, it can help us to have a less, you know, less anger and hatred for others, you know. When things go wrong in our life, you know, or in our, you know, when things doesn't go so well, you know, when we face some challenges, difficulties, problem, you know, most time we kind of seem to blame others for that, you know. And when we blame someone, then anger arises, you know. The moment you blame that person for your problem, your sufferings, your difficulties, then of course, anger arises. You know? So, but instead of blaming everything for someone there, instead, you know, we relate that problem to that, the fundamental cause that is the, 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 the selfish attitude and ignorance. And so therefore we don't blame everything to others for that experience. And if you don't blame whole everything there, then you can, your anger, your resentment, your grudges, whatever you feel can be less intense, you know, can be less strong you know, can be more light or not have at all, you know, and even you have, it's not so strong, you know. Mm. And then uh, the fifth power, the force is the power and the force of um, prayer, dedications, you know. Mm. Again, throughout the day, you know, whenever we are able to engage in any kind of any, any virtues, any virtues, any Dharma practice, you know, um, any positive um, thoughts or any virtue to any of the door, you know, about, um, any of the three doors, body, speech, and mind, you know. we we'll try to dedicate and pray, you know, due to these virtues, due to these positive um, actions, positive karma, or virtues, merit, whatever I have created, you know, may myself, may all sentient beings be able to cultivate the two bodhisattva mind. Those who have all, those who have not cultivated, may they be able to cultivate the bodhisattva mind within their mind stream, one segment or others. Those who have already cultivated, may they never decrease, may they ever able to maintain and increase and improve more and more. You know? Dedicating and praying, you know, due to all these virtues, may I never be able to be, may I never be separated from those both to the mind in all this lifetime, in the intermediate stage part of, in all future life, you know, until we achieve enlightenment. Again, praying, dedicating that. Again, praying, dedicating by engaging those virtues and merit that I collected, you know. Yeah, I always encounter and met, you know, qualified masters that will show me how to cultivate the two the mind. A master who can show me, teach me, give me instructions, advice, correct advice, teachings, how to cultivate both the mind, how to maintain, how to develop them. 
who can inspire me to cultivate those bodhicitta mind. Who can who will be able to encourage and inspire me to do that? May I never may I you know always meet them in this life, in the mid in the middle stage part of all the future lives until enlightenment. May I never be separated from them. May I never be separated from them. And then dedicating and again pray making a prayer. You no. Know, May I always meet the Dharma, you know, that, that teach the two bodhicitta mind. Again, in this, in part or in futures, in future lives, you know, may I never be separated from such Dharma, even for a second, for a moment. Mm. So like that, again, we dedicate and we make the prayer to practice the two bodhicitta mind and having practiced the two bodhicitta mind to be able to cultivate the two bodhicitta mind, having cultivated the two bodhicitta mind to be able to maintain and increase and to have the, all the right conducive conditions for that and to be free from all the obstacles to be able to cultivate to bodhicitta mind. And so again, all, you know, the motivations to inspire are to cultivate the two bodhicitta mind and then engage in the two bodhicitta mind through the practice of familiarities. And then through the practice of engaging the virtues and uh, dedication prayer, creating the conditions all supporting for that to bodhicitta practice. You know, kind of directing all different practices we engage into. The virtues, the dedication, the prayers, all supporting that the main practice, the primary practice of to bodhicitta mind. Mm. And then in terms of the blaming the egoistic mind or letting go, you know, again, you know, seeing all the cause of all the sufferings and problem rooted in the selfish attitude and self uh, selfish attitude and ignorance. And thereby, again, reducing and overcoming the selfish attitude and ignorance. And the more you, we are able to reduce the selfish attitude, the more easier it is to cultivate the bodhicitta mind. The more you are able to reduce the ignorance, the more easier it is to cultivate the, the wisdom or the ultimate bodhicitta. And when you are able to destroy the selfish attitude, then you would have no problem to cultivate the bodhicitta mind because those two are contradict contradictions, um, mental state forces, you know. One who, one is, you know, self-centeredness, selfish attitude is self-centeredness, you know, it's all about oneself and the bodhicitta is all about others, you know. It's centered around others is centered around others, whereas selfish attitude is centered around self. And so when you have that, the mind that is too self-centered become less, is much more easier to cultivate the mind that centers around others, the bodhicitta mind. And same with the ignorance and the wisdom. Uh, The more stronger, we, the more stronger ignorance we have, the less clarity there is. There's more confusions. There's more darkness. And uh, with that kind of confusion, darkness, uh, and unclarity, then you cannot. It's hard to develop the wisdom. But when you have less of confusions, less of Due to, less, due to less of ignorance, less confusion, 
less in uh, less darkness less unclarity then it's much more easier to develop the light of the wisdom the light of the wisdom the clarity of the wisdom mm. so i think that is more or less um, integrating those practices you know the 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 the, the whole as I mentioned yesterday, no. Buddhism is all about reducing those harmful, destructive, negative emotions. It's all about that. And among all those destructive and negative emotions, harmful emotions, the root of those is the selfish attitude and ignorance. And so if we can, you know, integrate any practice that can reduce them and increase the two body the mind, you know, throughout the day, you know, then, um, then we have been able to integrate the Buddhism and Dharma into our everyday life, in our practice, in our activities. Okay. Mm. So now, as I mentioned yesterday, after that, I'm going to kind of um, touch on um, trying to have a kind of more kind of formal kind of creating kind of little bit of kind of, of course, just as an example, because you know, everyone can have a different practices, but just, just to have kind of creating some kind of um, daily practice, you know, and through that daily practice, if you, if we, if we implement those daily practices, you know, then, you know, day become week, week become month, month become year, you know, then if you are able to spend one day, you know, meaningful, virtuous, spiritual, then your day by day, the week become more virtuous, more spiritual, more beneficial. And week by week, the month become more spiritual, beneficial, helpful. Month by month, year become, year by year, then your life become, your life become virtuous, you know, meaningful and positive. <clears throat> mm. So maybe if we start from the morning, you know, of course we start the day with the morning, you know, and so starting the day with the motivations, you know, starting the motivation for the life, especially for the year, month, week, and especially for 24 hours, particularly for 24 hours, to so generating the motivations, you know, the both the motivations. And one can do that, um, start the both the motivation, you know, extensive meditations, or medium or very shortly, short, you know, short meditations or practice to generate that both the, um, motivations, you know. Just to give you one example, short one, you know. Mm.
the purpose of my life is to be benefit not only just to myself but for other sentient beings as well and that is because we have the potential to be benefit to others not just ourselves if something else if we don't have the potential to be benefit to others but we do have the potential to be benefit not only just ourselves but to be benefit to others and to waste that to not being able to use that potential in waste is a great loss for yourself, loss for others. So therefore, you know, the cultivating a strong wish, the, the purpose of my life, the meaning of life is to be benefit to others, you know. If that is not the case, it is, if it is just by our surviving, you know, then what is the difference between having a human life and animal life? You know, sometimes animal life might be even better if it's all about surviving, just being, just having enough to eat, sustain, having clothes to keep ourselves warm or all of that, shelter, you know, if it's all about that, you know, even the animals, you know, can do that. So there's not much difference, you know. And especially if we use this human life to bring more destructions and more pain and suffering to others, it's even worse than the coming as animals, you know. And so anyway, so with that understanding, with that understanding, the purpose of my life is to be help and benefit to others, you know. And we can be helpful and benefit in many different ways, you know. Many different ways to be there, you know, when someone is need a, you know, food, being able to help with the food. When someone need a help with, you know, time, giving time, helping with the time. When do you, someone need your skill, help, helping with your skills, your wisdom, your knowledge, your experience, you know, whatever different help, you know, um, physically, emotionally, you know, whatever help that we can be helpful, someone need your help and when we are able to provide that, all those, there are so many different ways that we can be help, benefit, but, you know, the most benefit and help, the best help and benefit will be if we can inspire them, whether through our example, by sharing our wisdom experiences, inspiring them, helping them, inspiring them to overcome their own afflictive emotions because that is the very root of their problem and sufferings. Until they get rid of that, even though we can help them, we can only help them temporarily. We are unable to, it's never end, to, there is no end to the help. You help with someone with today something and next day they need another help for something else. And next week they need something, another help for something else. Next month, so even just to help one person, there's no end. Because the problem keep on coming, problem keep on coming, as long as we're every, as long as we're in samsara, as long as we're the delusions and the karma, you know the problem keep arising and you try to solve that. And again, another problem arises because we don't go to the root of the problem because it's, we are just treating the symptom. Until you go to the very root, you know, the symptom can stop for a few moments, but again, it, it arises, manifests. It's same way, same way, you know, and so in order to 
the purpose of my life to, to, to be help and benefit to others you know? and in order to be not only temporary samsaric help and benefit of course we can do that but most most importantly to be greatest help and benefit to be able to help them and inspire them to free themselves from their own to emotion and delusion and obscurations and, you know in order to do that then i myself need to be more enlightened you know with more compassion more wisdom more skillful means you know i myself need to grow I myself need to be practiced and become more and more enlightened. And finally, you know, to achieve fully enlightened state, you know, so that we can, as we progress on the path, as we become more and more enlightened, as we become, you know, more and more compassion, kind, stronger and stronger compassion, as we develop more and more wisdom, we are able to help sentient beings more and more, better and better. And then finally, when we achieve enlightenment, fully enlightenment, then we are able to help each and every sentient beings limitlessly, limitlessly, you know, in the most beneficial, most effective, in the most skillful way according to the needs of each and individuals. So we are, so then, you know, with that understanding, the wish to achieve that fully enlightenment in order to be greatest help and benefit to all sentient beings, in order to liberate them from all their suffering and cause of suffering permanently, in order to, help them to achieve happiness, not only temporary happiness, but ultimate true happiness and cause of happiness. In order to do that, then I must achieve fully enlightenment. In order to achieve enlightenment, I must, you know, actualize all these realizations and be on the path, such as five paths and boomies, you know, through those different realizations in, in order to cultivate those realizations, you know, then I need to engage in the practice and therefore I'm going to practice today, whatever meditation practice that I'm going to engage now, later, throughout the day, evenings, you know, that I'm going to practice. Also in order to, in order to practice, you know, in order to practice, I need to be healthy. I need to be alive and healthy. And for that, you know, the, uh, I need to have the resources to keep myself healthy and survive and practice. And as for that, I need to go to the job, do the job, you know, eat, sleep, take rest, do exercise. So whatever we are doing throughout the day, you know, we all this, we need all this to support ourselves to have the right conducive condition to practice. And therefore I'm going to engage in all those different activities that I'm going to do, be engaging throughout the day, you know, so that all of this, all of this, whatever I'm engaging into all the different activities different things that I'm going, I'm doing throughout the day that all, so that all of them can support towards my practice. All of them can support towards my practice. You know. So yeah, whatever form of exercise we do throughout the day, walking, going to gyms, yoga, whatever we are doing it is a way to keep our body and mind healthy. And the purpose of keeping our body and mind healthy is so that we can practice and we can be benefit to others. You know? So again, of course we do that every day, but we don't relate that that way. 
And so here, through motivations, we intentionally relate that, you know, I'm doing to do all this. So the purpose is not just to be healthy, you know, it's not just, that is not the, 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 the real purpose, just being physically and mentally healthy. The purpose, main purpose, high purpose is by keeping myself physically and mentally healthy so I can practice and be benefit to others. That is why. Same thing, you know, to be healthy, we need to eat, drink, you know, two meals, three meals, and other things, whatever we do, you know. So again, all of them is to that so I can survive, I can be healthy, and so that I can be healthy and surviving and healthy and having a life so I can practice and so that I can be help and benefit to other sentient beings. Same thing in order to, in order to keep myself healthy, I, I need the resources, you know, to keep healthy, you know, to, to have a cloth, shelter, food, health, to, to be able to support my health if I have some health issues, you know, to support families, help others. And in order to do that, I need some, uh, I need, you know, um, income, you know, I have to make income. And for that, I'm going to engage in whatever job, whatever work that I do. And the purpose of create, the purpose of engaging that job to bring some income and to, by that income, it's to support our practice. And through that, by supporting our practice, then being more help and more benefit to others. So relating everything that we do, you know, everything we do throughout the day that I'm going to do all, all of this throughout my day in order to support my practice to cultivate to bodhicitta mind, to practice meditations, and so that I can be help and benefit now in whatever way I can. And as I become more and more enlightened with the practice, I, am, I will be able to do more and more benefit and better and better be help and better and better benefit more and more sentient beings. So with that intention, that motivations. So that is, therefore, I'm going to engage in all different activities that I'm going to engage today. You know, this life, this month, this week, special, this 24 hours. So with that kind of motivation, then you, you, you generate the motivation from the morning for all the activities. By doing that, then all your activities, by the power of that motivation, they become virtues. By the power of that motivation, all the activities that you do can become a virtuous and spiritual and cause of enlightenment. You know, and um, in Buddhism, the focus is always the motivations. The mind is all more than the action itself is the, your intention and motivations. The biggest factors, important factors, is the intention and motivation more than the action itself. I, I, one of my friends, you know, um, he used to be a lawyer, you know, of course he's retired now. And he, he said one of the things that he, he noticed when he came to the teachings and hearing the Buddhist teachings, you know, and our sanghas and uh, one of the things that kind of caught his mind and kind of is that about the motivation, the, the importance of the motivation, the emphasize on the, the so much emphasize on the, uh, the right intention or right motivations. Because he said in his, in his life before, that was never emphasized. 
It is all about you have goal and how to accomplish that. Motivation is not a factor. I have this goal and I have to achieve that. However, I have to find every means to achieve that. How I achieve that, it doesn't matter much as long as I achieve that, as, I, as long as I achieve my goal. And that was when he came to the Dhamma, always focusing and emphasizing the intention, motivation that caught his mind very strongly because it is something very different from how, how he used to approach his life, his job, everything. And, and so what I'm trying to say is in, in the Dharma, in the Buddhism, especially in Mayan Dharma, Buddhism, the most important factors is the intention, the motivations. No, the intention, the motivations. And so that is why we try to cultivate really, really good, positive bodhicitta motivation from the very morning, first thing, you know, for the whole day, whole week, months and years. Okay, so I think we will stop here. Uh, any, any questions, any comments, questions from this morning? Anything to share? Feel free to unmute yourself or uh, put something in the chat if you'd like to record a question in your chat. Yeah, if anyone has. Keshala, this is Heather. Um, yeah, please. I did my homework last night. I watched a very, very stupid television show. Mm -hmm. And in this stupid television show, there were, uh, do you know what paparazzi, they're the photographers that take pictures of the celebrities. They were climbing a fence to try to take pictures of the celebrities. So I was telling myself that this is like my mind. I put a big fence around my mind so that the, the anger and afflictive emotions can't get over the, over the fence. So I did a good job of practicing the Dharma by watching an incredibly stupid television show. <laughs> <laughs> but I did have a question about, um, Anger is prob anger is a, is a, the emotion that arises the, the most for me, and particularly when I feel scared. And so I can uh, recognize that it's something. I, I I can recognize that it's not me, and it's something that's that's arising. I still engage with it, though. So I I um and I and I do recognize that it causes me more problems. All of the things I know this intellectually, but I still find myself engaging with it. Is there, is there something I can do to work with, to work with that? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, different people work on different practice method, you know, those who work the mindfulness meditations, you know, um, because you do that practice every day, so you have developed a tools to be able to kind of just um, be aware without being involved. Right. But you can't do just by just today, I want to do that way, you can't do that. It's something you have to develop over the time by being, just watching, for example, breath, you know? Yeah. Just breath and then slowly, slowly, being aware of whatever sensations and the emotion that arises and just being aware of them, but not getting involved. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes if you have a good, um, uh, you know, focus, then instead of when your mind started to get engaged, you try to bring your mind back to the breath, you know, so yeah. kind of your mind's runs towards that to get engaged and you bring it back by focus on the bread and so that you don't allow it to run after that engage that so definitely David that is um, one of the tools that a certain practitioner um, use it and and then of course also you know um, 
you know, meditating on the emptiness. Again, same thing, you know, I don't think it will become effective, as effective if you try to do the meditation on the emptiness in that moment when you are in this moment of strong anger. And if you have not, if you are not used to doing that meditation every day, and if you don't have the tools, you know. But if someone has been meditating on emptiness every day, and they have built up that practice, you know, and then when something like anger ha ha arises, then you try to meditate on emptiness that you are very used to and that you have been familiar with that, then that can be effective to kind of, you know, um, not to have that strong anger, you know. Um, first of all, maybe you might be able to stop it from arising. And if it is already arising, then, you know, you can stop it from being more intense and more strong. And so you can reduce that and minimize that. So, you know, and also other, other different afflictive, um, I mean, uh, other different analytical meditation that like, for example, Shandideva explains in his um, chapter six, you know, there are many, many different way of analyzing so that we can um, reduce the, the anger. But again, you know, all of them to be effective, you know, um, you have to train yourself in everyday life um, before to be that tool to be effective in that moment. It's just like, you know, um, maybe certain, certain kind of martial art to defend yourself, okay? And maybe you have learned that and you know some of the techniques how to defend yourself, okay? But if you don't do that every day when you are actually in the situation and someone trying to attack, it's just, you are not going to defend yourself if you are not skilled in that because you have not practiced that. Just by knowing, you know, I know that you can do this and that, try to, you know, put the whatever you have certain, you have learned that, but you, you have never practiced yourself enough to defend yourself. Right. And then trying to use that at that moment, you will not be able to defend it because it's not something you have practiced over the time. So you are good at that. And so that will be the same with the meditation. What happens is a lot of time it is all in our, in our head, you know, we have the knowledge, but we have not practiced. And so, so when we try to now, in, when the negative emotions arise and when we try to apply that and we are trying to do something that we are not so used to, it's something that we are not familiar with that then it does not become as effective as it should be because of that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there are many different meditations, uh, different meditations and all of them can be effective but we just have to be practicing that. Not just, we need to practice that when something really happens, you know, but we have to practice every day so that our practice is strong. And then when yeah. something happens and we can apply, then it becomes effective. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Geshla, I have one question, it's yes. Catherine. Yes. Yes. Um, thank you for it. These are such great teachings. I, the part that you talked about that I um, felt a lot of connection was about problems, like always arising, always arising, you think you manage, and then they come in that being part of samsara. I think for me, that's the biggest trigger of my negative emotions. And I always feel like I take them inside, like, oh, this is my problem or my fault that this happened again, or now this happened, you know, such and such. Um, so like a strong connection with the negative emotion and the problem is maybe um, something I don't know how to um, separate so easily. Mm -hmm. So any advice be helpful? I know, again, I think um, personally, sometimes it helped me and I think, you know, and that is what also in the teaching Dharma, they says, you know, 
I think is if we realize, you know, samsara means problems, you know, samsara means imperfections, samsara means suffering, samsara means problems, you know, and so that is part of our life. That's the nature of samsara. And it's not only ourselves, anyone who is in samsara. Of course, when we are talking about samsara, we are not talking about the physical planet itself. It's talking about anyone who is under the, under the uh, control of the delusion, their karma, you know, that is samsara, you know. So that person in samsara, you know, anyone, any sentient beings who is under the control of delusion and karma. You know, and so therefore, anyone who in samsara, you know, experience that we're there, not only one, anyone who is samsara experience similar like us. Maybe it not, might not be exactly the same, but very similar problem, very similar uh, situation. And time to time, sometimes we can see it, sometimes we don't see it. Sometimes we see their problem, sometimes we don't see their problem, even though they are experienced just like ourselves. So, you know, being aware of that and that understanding or that realization can make us more kind of accepting the sufferings, more accepting suffering because that is the nature of it. Just like in the winter, snow is part of like, you know, where you are and also here, you know, is part of that weather and we accept that in the winter, there will be snow, there will be storm and we just have to prepare ourselves. But that kind of coldness, we have to just accept that because that's how it is. It's just a nature of that. Once you accept that it's not so, you don't have strong aversion towards that. If you don't have strong aversion towards that, then it doesn't allow you to have all these negative emotions arising. The problem is when we have aversion to something and when we face that something object that you have strong aversions, then you know when you when you met with that, then you are not happy about that. You are because there's something you don't want and you have strong aversions, and that and that make you unhappy, and that unhappy lead you to a, a negative emotion, negative thoughts. And instead you know, being more accepting of that because that is the nature of samsara. That is the nature of what is meant to be samsara. Un unless we get out of samsara, where as long as we're in samsara, we have to deal with that. You know, if you live in a certain places where there is snow in the winter, unless you move out of there, you have to accept that. That is how it is. And once you accept that, it's not so unbearable. And you don't have strong aversion towards that, even though there's a little bit of discomfort time to time. You know, you have little discomfort, uneasiness time to time, but you don't have a strong disliking or strong aversion towards that. You know, but if you have a strong aversion and strong disliking, then every time there's strong, every time there's no, it will upset you, make you unhappy, and that will give rise to many other negative emotions. And that is the same like with every other. Uh, problem and suffering. And so I think that that um, through that understanding and accepting that can be uh, helpful so that you don't have a strong aversion towards that, you know, because Thank you. as long as we're in samsara, we can never, we can never be free from problem and suffer problem. Only when we are out of samsara, then we can be free from the problems. And so as long as we're in samsara, we're never free from the problem. And so problem is part of that package. Problem is part of that nature. And the, the more we are able to accept it, the less painful it is, less aversion we have towards that. And then that doesn't give rise to many other delusions because of that. Okay. Okay, so then we'll do the, you know, we'll meet again at one, yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll meet at one and um, one to 2.30 today we'll, we can resume. So 
everyone get nourished and fed and we'll come back in about an hour and a half. Okay. Feel free to come up a little early if you'd like to get settled. Okay. Sanjo, Sanjo, Rimboche, Maki, Pana, Kiguchi, Kiawa, Nyambaya, Kongle, Kondu, Kiawa. Okay. And if you have any questions, please, we can, you can bring it later, next sessions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.